Okay, welcome to today's show with Phil. Uh, today we're doing a uh, program on um, food shortage, which is tied to socialism or communism, basically. Communism is where government controls production and food distribution and rationing food to every single family or individual, per se. No, it's sad, it's sad by design that uh, food companies or food factories are burning. I, I think it's done deliberately to drive up the price. And uh, and I overheard somebody saying that the market's volatile, the market this, market that. Listen, if this is planned by design to break down the will of America to accept the new world order, People need to just get their heads out of the backside and just embrace reality. We need to keep the world going around. If it's by design to institute the Great Reset, I got bad news for you. The people that are behind it are going to be the ones last. They think they're going to win, but they're not going to win. They are going to lose really badly. So let's listen to what Mr. Urban Sentinel has to say about food shortages. Food confiscation. Will it happen? Could it happen? Let's talk about this. I'm Urban Sentinel. Welcome to my channel. There's a lot of stuff going on with regards to our food supply, the food chain, everything that involves food, the production of it, poultry, cattle, pigs, corn, wheat, soy, barley, vegetables, you name it. We've had, uh, I believe it's close to six or seven food production companies over the last week and a half, two weeks, catch fire, explode, or in some other way, shape, or form be left inoperable here domestically. The still current situation over in Eastern Europe with Russia and Ukraine and the uh, vast amounts of grain and corn and everything else that they produce that supplies a large amount to the world. Now, yes, the United States does produce a lot of its own food, but portions of what we produce are actually used as filler and feed for livestock. So it's not directly used for human consumption and other parts of it are used for human consumption, but in a tertiary manner, such as in corn oil, olive oil, things that are used as additional ingredients to a product rather than strictly the product itself. Now, in terms of food confiscation, most people have in their minds the government coming knocking on the door, kicking it open and taking, you know, your cans of tuna fish and beans and then walking off and going on to the next house. That by one extent isn't the way it's going to happen. Reasonably speaking, and again, we're talking about government agencies, we're talking about bureaucracies, we're talking about politicians. You combine all three of those together, you're never going to get a properly functioning laid out plan. If the President of the United States at some point recognizes that there is a food crisis here in the United States for United States citizens, they would most likely enact some type of executive action and they would put multiple agencies in charge of remedying the problem. FEMA would be in there. You would have Department of Agriculture in there. The uh, National Guard would be federalized to aid in the distribution and collection of foods. But here's what's most likely going to happen. One, commercial farmers. They're registered with the FDA. Those will be a target. So you will have government agencies and military going to commercial farmers, securing the farm, securing the product, securing everything that is there. Food producers and processing facilities, the ones that basically process the chicken and the beef and handle you know, the corn and the wheat and all that stuff, that's another location that they'll be going to secure those facilities. Many so basically, you know, when I talked about government control, that is a model of uh, communism. Now, they do executive action to, um, to do this. It ain't going to end well. Could have mass incarceration. Could have mass arrest. Could have mass, uh, Violence, you're going to have mass everything. 
but the but no, he's going to say the politicians going to get from the top, and the rest of it's going to go to the common people. And I promise you, it ain't going to end well. Let's continue with the show. Cases, it's just going to provide security and overwatch to basically make sure what comes in goes out to where it's supposed to go in the amounts it's supposed to go to. The next tier level are the distribution centers and retailers, meaning all of your chain grocery stores. They get food into a warehouse and the warehouse ships it out to all the stores. The warehouses will come under government control. The individual retail stores will also come under government control. To a greater extent, it may simply be local county state police are authorized to perform security checks at these stores or they're authorized to make sure that the certain amounts of foods that are in there are only for a limited distribution or people that have the proper food ration card coming in to basically get only a specified amount of food. Food banks by themselves are not going to come under direct assault, as well as private citizens. The issue and the problem that they would have with that is it's a lot harder to go through an entire city door to door, taking everything that someone has to bring it to a food collection place, to have it counted, tallied up, hand the person that you just took food from a ration card or on their cell phone, a ration app to allot them almost the exact same amount of food you just took from them in the first place because they're going to get you know food for that day, food for that week, food for that month, and it's going to end up being the amount of food that they would have consumed from their own supplies during that same time period. But as I said before, this is the government and they don't do things logically. What we're looking at is the government controlling the key points, the production and the distribution and the processing. This way, they can monitor exactly what's there, and then they can shift things around. They can look at a high production area in the Midwest, but a low population. They'll start shifting and adjusting things where they feel it needs to go. Now, I can guarantee you, and you probably already think of this too, the needs will be based upon the politicians and the pundits that favor and lobby to have additional warehouses and additional distribution points in their area you know for the good of all put all the food resource locations in these few places this way they get theirs first and then they can then control other people down through the line so within your city within your metropolitan area you'll have your city council people you'll have your state representatives all piping up saying i got this stuff here for you i did this for you number one don't forget to vote for me and then they'll also be able to at this point strong arm people on a political level without directly going at them politically now now do you see where he's coming at you scratch my you scratch my back I scratch your back people wake up we're in a crisis wake up What he's talking about is communism. Don't believe me? Go ask people who lived under Soviet Union rule for 70 years. Go ask somebody who lived in Soviet Union. Go go ask them. It, it was it was bad. They had no free enterprise, no capitalism. Now, all they had was communism. But I promise you, the oligarchists got well, got fed real well, but everybody else had to get rationed out. To people who are advocating for communism, be careful what you get. You might just get it and won't be able to get your backside out of it. Let's continue with this video. Well, suddenly, if you want your neighborhood to get food at that food bank, you need to either sign off on something that I want, or you need to step back and, you know, take a back seat to certain projects that I intend to do. That's going to happen. We know that's going to happen. But as far as military showing up at your doorstep, getting ready to take the food that you have, that would be strictly under rogue situations. That wouldn't be an order from the White House coming down through the FDA and FEMA, that would be 
food is run out, supplies are gone, everything's falling apart, and you might have military units that are now, effectively speaking, forced to be on their own because they're a National Guard unit, they got federalized, and they got shipped six states away, and they're just trying to make it home. Situation like that, again, that's at the extreme end, but it's still something to think about. It's a completely different situation when there is no more supplies coming in anywhere versus they're moving pieces around, taking 10% from here, 5% from here, adding 3% over here, 15% over here, and they keep moving things around the way that they need to to make it look like, one, they're fixing the problem, because at any point in time, they can point to an area and say, hey, look, you guys have... You see, they say they're fixing the problem, but guess what? Guess who caused the problem? The politicians. The elected officials, the power-hungry politicians, they caused the problem. All right, they caused the problems. I want you to open up your. Please unplug from the media. Unplug from the cable. Unfro unplug from the, the flat screen TV because you're being conditioned and brainwashed. The politicians are not the answer. Listen, the politicians cause problems to get reelected to fix the problem. They cause more problems, and the problem ain't fixed. Got full shells and you've got full bellies. And then meanwhile, this place over here is lacking and needing more. They'll fix that and adjust it the way they need to. It's more for show from their end to keep people calm for the people that don't really understand it, don't have a clue. And, you know, they're just happy to be sheep in the field, grazing on the grass that they're given. And, you know, that's the life that they live. Everyone else, we're fully aware that, yes, if you grow your own food, you have a garden, you've got a greenhouse, you've got stored supplies up. You could become a target, but realistically, you are going to become a target first and foremost of a criminal element versus an organized and orchestrated government plan. So that's the key thing. Would food, would food confiscations happen? They could, but it would have to be in an extreme circumstance. And it's not going to be FBI agents showing up at your door. It's not going to be state police showing up at your door. It's going to be the random and rogue element that happened to know, oh, this person, I saw they got a delivery of some freeze-dried food products, or this person uh, has a garden, or someone works at a garden center, and you happen to have a you know garden account there, and they know that you bought several supplies for maintaining a garden. It could be something as simple as you know someone in that situation knowing what customers have what, or who bought something most recently, and the information is in the system. On the larger scale, we are going to see reduction in certain types of crops. We're going to see increases in the prices for products. We're going to see a shift in what is available. And lots of people say, well, we can learn to get by with less. We absolutely can. But now, notice, and guess who's uh, driving the prices up? Take a look at Wall Street. They manipulate the damn prices in the stock market. Think about it. Think about it. But when so many things are interconnected with certain common ingredients, certain common things, once that supply starts dwindling, it effectively reduces the overall supply for everything because too much of our food system is interlocked in a way that when you start pulling out or reducing certain parts of the ingredients, you minimize to almost zero out the availability of a wider range of food products. Mm -hmm. So from my point of view, Food confiscation could happen. The federal government could authorize some emergency act, but I feel that they will take the food effectively from the top down. They'll start with the growers and the producers. They'll go to the processing facilities. They'll move to the distribution, the warehouses, and then lastly to the retail establishments, because at least at the retail point there, they can have full control over all the people that come to get the food. And like I said, you know, a ration card or an app, something like that, where you have to show that you're allotted X amount of food during this time period. They scan it, it goes into the system, and just like point of sale system, they know how much has gone out and they know who's gotten what. So if you're a single, uh, if you're a small family of four or a single person, or you're a larger family of six, they can still keep track of how much food based upon, you know, USDA, FDA, you know, guidelines of how much nutrition you need and they'll work it that way. So you can't effectively double dip through the system. 
But as far as independent growers, small farms, things that are not registered with the government, that's not going to be something that they're going to immediately target. Pure, plain and simple. Like I said, you're more likely in this case, as people have made comments before, to be attacked by effectively a, a, a raider or a marauder, someone who has full criminal intent to simply take and steal what is there irregardless of the situation. And that, of course, is something that you would have to handle to the best of your ability under those con given conditions. So that's all I want to say about that. But it is something to think about coming with the current growing season that's going on. We don't know what natural disasters are going to happen. We don't know what new viruses or plagues are going to hit the crops and going to hit the livestock and how that's going to turn out. We don't know what the cost of corn and oil and everything else are going to be in the next two, three months and how that's going to play out through the year. So as the rest of the spring goes on and turns into summer and then fall comes around, we're going to have a much better look at how things are going and where they could go through the end of 2022 going into 2023. All right. So like, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. All right. Now, we already talked about the communism. We already talked about the food shortage. We already talked about people living under a socialist rule. And it ain't going to be fun. Your money's going to be worthless. People are going to be... It, it's, 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 it's really bad. So, thank you for watching this video, and you... Have a good day and God bless.